When it comes to comparing GNOME to KDE Plasma, one of the most common arguments being made is GNOME's lack in customization options. But is this even true if we can just use third party extensions? I mean, on KDE Plasma you also download themes, decorations or KWIN scripts from third party developers. So what's the difference? In today's video, we are going to talk about how similar GNOME and KDE Plasma are in terms of customization, what some known limits are, and what I think on how the situation can be improved for everyone. Let's get straight into it. So the first difference is of course advertisement. KDE Plasma basically comes with everything you need for customizing your desktop out of the box, and you can find most options directly in the system settings. In the colors and themes category, you can change background and accent colors, how application elements look, system icons and colors behave, how the window top bar looks and much much more. It should however be noted that not all of these settings are bundled together. The task switcher for all tabbing and desktop effects for example are located in a completely different category, so there might be more settings available than you are initially aware of. Moving over to GNOME, the options you have available can vary from distro to distro by default. That is because GNOME doesn't really ship any customization options anymore. The only options you do have is switching to dark mode and with GNOME 37, which releases later this year, choosing some pre-selected accent colors. Anything else related to window and icon theming is only accessible via an application called GNOME Tweaks, but the options here are quite limited. It also isn't really apparent how you can install a new theme, since you don't have a browser or the option to download themes directly via the package manager. In order to install a theme on GNOME, what you want to do is to open a web browser, go to GNOME Looks and browse through the page until you find a theme you like. Then you download it, extract the contents into a hidden .themes directory in your home, and if it's your first theme, you might also need to create this directory first. And there it is. Alright, but we have one problem. Theming GNOME usually works fine on older GDK3 apps, but not for GDK4. So things like the file manager, system apps and even GNOME tweaks itself won't apply it. Now there are some themes that are GDK4 compatible, but they are a bit harder to install. And a while ago there was an attempt to ease GDK4 theming with a tool called Gradient, which unfortunately is no longer maintained. So if you want to change GNOME's appearance, then the best thing to do is to just rely on changing the mouse and icon themes, since those work just fine. Let's move on to the more interesting part. Extensions on GNOME versus KD Plasma. To getting extensions working on GNOME, you first need to download an extension manager. As of right now, there is an older version, whereas you need to manually download and install extensions, but also a newer one, which comes with its own browser. And it's the one that I personally prefer. With the extension manager installed, you kind of get the KDE Plasma experience when it comes to finding and installing extensions, but with the difference that everything is managed in a centralized user interface. This on its own is great, but I'm not entirely sure if I like this approach with this particular iteration, especially if you have a lot of extensions installed. But I also don't really like the fragmented settings on Plasma either. Like this could just be me and how I operate my system, but I think that some sort of dedicated application or section the settings is better, but it should come with some categories which developers and maintainers can choose from. I kind of feel like both implementations are not really all that great right now. On Plasma each customization window looks a bit different, and there is no centralized way to find all themes or scripts straight from the settings. And on GNOME I wish that they combine this new extension tab with the GNOME Tweaks Appearance tab, so that at least everything that screams customization is bundled together. But that's just as a side note. When it comes to customizing, then you can use GNOME extensions to basically mimic another desktop environment. With the dash to panel extension for example, we can create a panel like on KDE Plasma or Windows. With the arc menu extension, we get a start menu, which is then even more customizable by itself. On KDE Plasma, we can use KWIN scripts to only allow for virtual desktops on the primary display. We can also better integrate our phone with a widget called KDE Connect or use G-Connect on GNOME via the extension manager. Once we got this far, we can see that both desktop environments are kind of similar in terms of customization. GNOME extensions are often used to implement missing features that users want to have, while Plasma KWIN scripts and similar are often used to change the current behavior of already existing features, with the exception of tiling window management support in both, which kind of works. 
It's definitely not the best, let me tell you that much. So then how close is GNOME to KD Plasma in general? Well, it depends on how you want to use it. GDK4 and Lipid Vita don't really play nice with third-party themes. But if you don't need them, then this is kind of irrelevant anyway. One topic, however, that is kind of important is stability and reliability. See, GNOME extensions sometimes utilize some functionalities or configuration files that other extensions use as well. So in rare cases, it can happen that two extensions are basically battling each other, which then results in unexpected behaviors. In the past, this was especially true with a custom distro or desk environment install, whereas extensions were preventing some features to work properly. On KDE Plasma, this isn't that much of a problem, since the desktop environment itself is already loaded with many customization capabilities that don't necessarily require any further extensions. No pun intended. On GNOME, the whole politics on what the desktop environment is supposed to be and how workloads are being distributed are a lot more difficult. While KDE Plasma still generally embraces customization and builds this straight into the desktop environment, GNOME doesn't really want to deal with all of that. Why? Well, the answer is rather simple. Who deals with problems? Now, the GNOME developers are not really against customization or extensions per se, but if an extension has a problem that is caused by something like the compositor, if this issue is not something that applies to other things as well, then it might not get fixed at all. And I kind of get that. Like, why should I as a desktop environment dev implement a patch for a feature that is not even part of my desktop environment? Now this view on things definitely leads us to the discussion on when an extension should be considered to be implemented into the desktop environment itself. If a lot of people use a certain extension, then it makes sense to integrate it into the desktop altogether, so that it is properly maintained and doesn't break after each release of a new version. Because this is a big problem, especially for the developers of those extensions. There are some changes to fundamental parts of the desktop environment, either for internal bug fixing, patching of security issues, new features require changes, or some old dependencies are being dropped, and every extension that was based upon this needs to be fixed. Now in contrast to GNOME, I think that KDE Plasma is integrating too much into the desktop environment, which leads to more breakages. Okay, well, that was a bit extreme, let's call them minor annoyances. From a usability perspective, I find the extension approach better, since the user is not overloaded with pre-installed packages and can always extend their experience to whatever they like. But there also needs to be some sort of easier migration from one release version to another. Currently, it's really not ideal. Right, so quickly summarized, both GNOME and KDE Plasma can be customized quite easily. While Plasma definitely takes the gold in theming and how many features are being actively maintained, GNOME extensions are also working really well, as long as they don't break via a version update. It seems like many use GNOME extensions to work around its many limitations, while on Plasma you often use scripts to limit or change inbuilt functionalities. In the end, and my opinion, it doesn't really matter which one you choose when it comes to customization, but it's best to pick the one that is already the closest to your personal workflow. Like if you know that you want a taskbar and custom themes, then there is a chance that you wouldn't even utilize GNOME's workflow features, which would make Plasma already the much better choice. And if you still want to use GNOME, then another option to guarantee a long and problem-free experience is to just use a stable distro like Debian. There, you don't need to worry about breakages between desktop environment versions, since they don't change them for quite a while. That's honestly something that some of you might want to consider. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to fund various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then make sure to show it with a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.